is a paid advertisement for the Sharper Image. time that I spent on the Lifetime Network, Oprah Winfrey Channel, Spike TV, as well as my recent cameo on the Hannah Montana Christmas Special. Today in my laboratory we're going to be working with one of my favorite topics, enzymes. For this lab today we're going to use hydrogen peroxide as our reactant and it's going to break down into the products of water and oxygen gas. This product can occur spontaneously and it can also happen in the presence of heat. But for today, we're going to use an enzyme to make this reaction speed up. Unfortunately for our cells, enzymes are very sensitive to temperature and pH. In this case, by adding sulfuric acid, it denatures or destroys the enzymes. This completely stops the reaction, and you're going to do this today to all your beakers. When you arrive at your lab counter, you'll see your tray with all your stuff in it, just like this. Please make sure it returns to the state when you are all done with your lab today. In your lab, you'll notice four chemicals already prepared. We've got hydrogen peroxide, a yeast enzyme solution, you have potassium permanganate, as well as sulfuric acid. Each one of these has a syringe, and I'd like you to please leave them in there because we don't want to cross-contaminate. There is a fifth syringe by itself with a little X on it. This one you're going to leave because you're going to later use this with your titrate cup. This titrate cup we'll just kind of keep to the side for right now. but. One thing to mention is these two are not so dangerous. It's just an enzyme and peroxide. If you get it on you, not a big deal. These two, on the other hand, please keep these in the tray at all times because if they spill, you're going to have a bad time. Potassium permanganate is very purple, and unless you want to look like Barney, I suggest please rinsing your fingers off and not wiping your hands on your shirt. Acid will potentially eat through your clothes, and as we said at the beginning of the year, if you touch your eye, you're going to have a bad time. Again, please follow all lab safety procedures. When you're ready to start this lab, make sure you take the six cups with the number with, of seconds written on the side and arrange them chronologically just as I have done on the table so it's easier to work with. Each cup to start is going to get 10 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide put in each one of these cups. Let's try this with one cup first. In this case, you can see I'm using the 15 second cup. All cups receive 10 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide to start. And when you're ready to begin, your cup is going to receive one milliliter of this enzyme and get your stopwatch ready and begin the count 15 seconds. Good idea to give it a little swirl. After 15 seconds has passed, you're going to give 10 milliliters of sulfuric acid and squirt it in just like that. Make sure you give it a little swish. The enzyme is denatured, the reaction has stopped. Now that the enzyme has been denatured, there is going to be no more chemical reaction and there still should be some fresh hydrogen peroxide. We're going to do a method called titration to figure out how much peroxide is still left inside of this cup that is uncatalyzed. To titrate, simply grab your titrate cup as well as your syringe that is meant to be the sampler and it has the X on it. You're going to suck out a total of 5 milliliters of the sample and put it in your titrate cup as I've already done here. To perform the titration, you're going to need your potassium permanganate as well as the syringe that was in there. First, make sure you give a little air between the tip and the plunger and then you're going to suck up any amount. I'd like you to get as close to 10 milliliters as possible, but it's not really that big of a deal. And then what you're going to do is record the initial volume of the potassium permanganate on your lab sheet. To titrate, bring in your cup, and then you're going to set it down. And titration is a very careful process. I like to hold it like this in my hand, but you could hold it like this and have somebody swish it around. But notice when I put a drop in there, it changes colors and that's because the potassium permanganate is reacting with all the free hydrogen peroxide and so the key is to keep it swishing around and you're going to notice it's going to kind of change color a little bit okay keep swishing it around and it'll turn a little brown but keep swishing it eventually it'll clear up 
you're going to keep adding potassium permanganate until this happens. I've reached a point of no return. The amount of potassium permanganate that you add until it turns a purplish color or brownish color is exactly the amount of hydrogen peroxide that was in this container. Thank you for joining me today and I truly hope you enjoy this lab. Remember to have fun and learn lots about enzymes. Please make sure you're recording your data at the bottom of your lab sheet. I am not going to be collecting this. We're actually going to be doing this in the computer lab when we get a chance to. But make sure that you clean up after yourself any chemicals on the counter, wipe them off. I do have these little squeegee things lying around the room and you can feel free to grab these. And uh, they work really well at squeegeeing up the counter when there's a little mess on there. But remember, safety is paramount at all times. Please make sure that you don't touch your clothes, especially your eyes. If you get a little acid or chemical on your finger, the sinks are always available and you can go ahead and rinse your sinks off. So with that said, just make sure everything is cleaned up and put away and of course properly dispose your chemicals in the right place. Uh, I think this is where it goes. So anyways, with that said, oh my goodness, uh, if you'll excuse me, uh, I have an audition for Blue's Clues on Ice. See you later.